So we also have Gracie Black. Would everybody say hi to Gracie? A lot of people said hi to you. Everybody. Said hi. Everybody. Well, I think this is so unbelievable, and I want to say I am very grateful to for whoever it is who was responsible for there not being rain. That I was very, very worried about that. Um, are there any other delegates and sen oh the senators that haven't been mentioned? Nancy Guthrie's here. Is there anybody out there that wasn't mentioned? Well, I think that's important. One of the things that I wanted to say, Senator Gonch is here, my colleagues Kelly Sabonia and Carol Miller, this is not a bipartisan issue. Oh, I mean it is a bipartisan issue. Wait a minute. This is a bipartisan issue. This is something that Democrats and Republicans can agree on, that we need to take care of everyone in West Virginia. And, and I want to I wanna step back a little bit, because um, a lot of you know that there's a really proud history and also a really ugly history uh, with people who have had disabilities and have been fighting for their rights. It's a long struggle. Uh, my mother worked in a mental institution, and at one point in time, states were kicking people out of mental institutions, and they said there was going to be community services, and there weren't. And it was a good thing because so many people were institutionalized and isolated and segregated that didn't need to be there. But it was a rough time. And the way that that happened, and that's what I want to remind you, it was protests, it was lawsuits, and it was laws. New laws, but it, it started with protests, it started with people suing. And, you know, we can pass laws, but the way that you enforce them is through the courts. There's a reason we have three branches of government, and we count on the judiciary. Now, some of you have heard of the Medley decision. Is there anybody here that's heard of the Medley decision? That was our Supreme Court that said that we need to follow the law and make sure people get the services they need. And the Olmstead decision, anyone hear the Olmstead decision? That was a very important US Supreme Court decision. But I also want to talk about what happened 25 years ago. Does anybody know what happened 25 years ago? I know there are people in this crowd that do. That's when the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed and signed by Congress. And it was so important. I have chills. Everybody should have chills because that was a landmark and that was a bipartisan effort. And it was an effort that was by people in every state that said, this is not right. You are discriminating against people who can't speak for themselves, who are segregated, you know, there, it isn't just African Americans who are segregated. People, were, dis, people with disabilities are segregated even in their homes. And that's the way it's going to be if these changes are intact. We are going to have more isolation and more segregation. Now, I want to talk, there are true money issues. That, you know, West Virginia really is facing a crisis. And I don't think we can, you know, just say, do what we want without realizing we have less money coming in from coal, we have less money coming in from ga ga oil and gas, we have less money coming in from the gas tax, and we also have less money coming in for gambling. Uh, the legislature and our past governors have tried to cobble together, and we have a requirement for a balanced budget. That's in our Constitution, and it's a good thing. But this is not just about money. This, as um, I think it was Mike said before me, this is about people, and it's about people we love. 
This is about people, and it's about priorities. You know, it's about putting your money where your mouth is. What is important? Our families are important, and, and they are really going to need help. Now, one piece of the money issue that I don't think has been mentioned yet is the cost shift. Now, you all know what the cost shift will mean. You've looked at these pages and pages of regulations. You know that it's been shifting on to families. And I'm not talking about moms and dads. I'm talking about aunts and uncles and neighbors. You guys are going to feel the brunt of this. But it's not just that. It's uh, going to be a shift on TANF. It's going to be a shift on, um, or on welfare, on Medicaid. And it's going to cause bankruptcies. Some families, our members, are not going to be able to go to work because they don't have the supports they need. We, it is going to have an enormous economic effect. It's not just saving $40,000. This is going to be a widespread economic effect. This on here. Are you a first-time mother? Yes. Congratulations. A lot of people. your letters and and we know how how scary this is um, but we've been there before it actually has been even worse before and one of the things we can't forget are the people that are on the waiting list just think how they're managing we have to remember the over 1,000 people that don't have any waiver services at all so this is going to be tricky to juggle this but I want to end with just a couple of suggestions. Um, everybody here has been asked to comment. I think one of the comments should be to DHHR, start over. Start over. how important it is to keep protesting. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Your stories have made a difference to us. And you need to make sure that all the legislators and the governor and our congressional representatives understand because this is not just a state issue. It's a state issue and it's a federal issue because the state of West Virginia is asking the federal government to approve this waiver request. And actually, we don't want them to do that. So our congressional representatives need to hear from us as well. And last, lastly, I'm telling you, you ought to sue. I'm sorry. That is how, that is how our laws are enforced, is you go to court and you say, you look back at the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's Congress described the isolation and segregation of individuals with disabilities as a serious and pervasive form of discrimination, and that it excluded people from participating in society. And it said that government agencies may not exclude people from participation in or be, deny the benefits of, of a public entity's services, programs, or activities. Now, I'm not really sure what that means, but the way we find out what it really means is through the courts. And we have a good court system in West Virginia. We have a good court system in our federal government. And you have, you and your families have a right to the most integrated setting appropriated, appropriate to your needs. That's what you're entitled to. So let's go get what we're entitled to, and let's keep up the noise. I want to thank all of you for bringing your voice to us here in Charleston. We came to listen. God bless you all. say thank you for being here for your families and we want you to know that the legislators here today stand here with you and we support you and your families. Thank you and God bless.